Um, uh, thank you, Pankaj. Um, it's always a pleasure for uh, professors to come and uh, talk uh, with uh, learned uh, audience. More learned the audience, uh, more excited you get to feel uh, to talk to them. And uh, it gets much more um, adventurous when you are talking on a subject which is not your core area. Uh, as a director of uh, Ford School of Management, um, my discipline is marketing. And we do deal with a lot of uh, human aspect uh, uh, of it. Uh, but then I uh, have been closely associated with NHRDN for almost uh, four years now and we have done uh, wonderful things together. Uh, it has been a very good uh, learning experience for me also and as professors you have to keep learning all the time uh, to be able to understand things. So the, the theme today which is uh, uh, HR shared services from uh, uh, technology to experience, uh, efficiency to experience. Uh, this is what we are going to talk on and uh, uh, coming from the academia, uh, you know, the first thing that when I look at this topic is uh, to develop an understanding what is this all about. So what I am going to share with you is a uh, bit of understanding of this, maybe it will wet your thought, uh, it might create some challenging situations in your mind to develop a better understanding what is meant by this and, and then I will give you uh, a, um, some new examples, uh, the way things are happening in the world and how would it impact the uh, organizations and therefore the HR functions within the uh, organizations. Uh, I'm not using any slides, so just my voice, so you may have to pay attention to uh, what I'm saying if you do want to uh, learn something. Now when I looked at this uh, shared services, uh, because I was here last year also, uh, you, you, know, been, you, know, you need to do a lot of research to figure out what this is all about and what struck me in the beginning was that the moment you talk of uh, this as a shared service, the fundamental meaning of this is that there is some function which is shared across different units in the uh, organization. Which means there is one custodian who is in control of uh, these uh, core activities within the HR, within the organizational function, which is uh, delivered across different uh, functional units uh, within the organization. Uh, this is what was the definitional aspect uh, described. Now when you look at this way of defining shared services, uh, which means one unit is providing services to different units, uh, in management term, we have had a term for this called centralization, centralized activity, you know, and in the 70s and the uh, 80s, uh, centralization was a subject domain for organizational structure, which was being discussed and debated, and people said that, well, centralization has certain advantages and certain disadvantages, so you have to, you know, uh, uh, split that into different units and, uh, you know, uh, restructure the organization. And, uh, you know, the concepts that came out of this discussion, what we are very familiar with now, called the SBU, a Strategic Business Unit. So you do not have everything as a centralized activity, but maybe you have SBUs, which are essentially a decentralized uh, activity. So, therefore, when you look at the shared services, is it just a centralization of activities? Am I renaming it as a shared services? Uh, yeah. So then it, it struck me that, well, I mean, are we just coining a new word for it? And then you go deeper into uh, the domain, uh, then you, uh, I came across a reference uh, which said that uh, the shared services was actually first quoted in a HR book uh, titled uh, HR Champions by an author called Ulrich. And in that uh, he did talk of a lot of futuristic things as to how the HR function will change and then that's how I started uh, picking up uh, things from there. So in essentially the way it was defined at that uh, stage was that shared service is a model to share services across business entities and therefore a term which got automatically generated was the in-house outsourcing. That means you have a shared service department within HR and therefore different activities are required to be done by different units within the organization. So there is something called in-house outsourcing. This started getting used which is also in a way a centralized way of uh, looking at things. Now this became very effective for large organizations. So I have a large organization like let's say uh, PNG, Procter and Gamble. They have different uh, units across the world, across the countries, you know, and different product lines. So they said that well, we have a shared service organization within our organization, uh, which is uh, focused on HR, and then therefore different units who need these uh, services would be delivered by the centralized unit called SSO, centralized service uh, organization. It was very effective for you know large corporations where they would be able to, uh, uh, what is called, consolidate services uh, across uh, uh, multiple uh, business units. Uh, now this is actually centralization. 
which was being done. Uh, as far as the function is concerned, if you say HR as a function, then when you're doing it, so it is, you're not giving independence to different units to do things on their own, but it is being done from one location. This is centralization. But then there is a certain nuances, there's a way of looking at uh, things differently in the uh, uh, current context. So whenever you talk of uh, a centralization and in a way uh, uh, shared services, which will come to now, uh, this is a, why it was being done. Now typically these were done by corporates. The corporates have one fundamental objective, to cut costs and maximize profit. So when you do these kinds of things, uh, costs were being reduced. For example, you know, I have one expert sitting here. Now this expert would not be using his expertise 24 by 7. So this expert is available only for a certain time if this person was to operate within one unit. So we can cut costs by not having multiple experts, but having just one expert who goes across different uh, units to do things. That's how you cut costs. For now, that's how uh, it is to be uh, looked at. So, therefore, if you look at these shared services in the context of not very large organizations, so does it have a relevance today? We saw that it has a relevance for large organizations. For, for smaller organizations, do we have to look at it uh, as a shared service is relevant today? But today, the world is changing very fast. You know, we are familiar with terms like globalization and technology, omnipresence. So the, the things are very changing in a very dramatic way, even for the uh, smaller organizations. Smaller organizations need not uh, function uh, in their own cocoon and see and think that, well, uh, what they see is all that they have, because uh, it is not like that. You know, any, any organization anywhere in the world can come in and, you know, uh, change the entire uh, way of uh, looking things. So therefore, when you talk of shared services, uh, the, the logic therefore goes that even for a smaller organization, we need to look at what we call HR transformation. The focus should be on transformation. Even if you're a small organization, how do you look at HR functions, different activities are required to be done? Uh, because there's a globalization that is happening, because there is a, uh, these uh, changes that is happening, you know, the, the way people are doing things, the way people are behaving is all undergoing a change. So we need to look at this as a, uh, 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 what is called the um, uh, HR uh, uh, transition. And therefore, uh, uh, the uh, HR from becoming an administrative expert or administrative ex uh, specialist, we need to move into a transformation specialist. Uh, uh, and essentially, you know, whenever you're looking at it, uh, uh, it is, um, uh, from the uh, perspective of, uh, you know, uh, cutting across different units in the organizations. Uh, now let's look at some of these business examples, uh, which are transforming work processes uh, that has a profound impact on the way things are being done in the uh, HR functions in the uh, organizations today. Uh, we are familiar with uh, uh, assembly line operations, you know, if you, uh, if you have been a business student, you would know that uh, Henry Ford uh, brought about this uh, uh, mass production of things, you know, from uh, a job-based activity, a car is been manufactured and then another car. So this is specialized, so it is assembly line. And the outcome of this was that uh, the cost of production of a car drastically went down. So he is also given this credit that he brought uh, a car from a luxury product domain into a common man's domain. So from a luxury item that a person is wanting to own, it became a product which is used by common man for uh, transportation. Now, this was happened, this happened early 20th century without, you know, the, the technology was not the way it is today. Now today, you know, the point is, the point I'm trying to make here is, at that point of time, some drastic change happened. The structuring was changed, so the cost went down drastically. Now today, the same thing is happening because of the technology. You have these techies which are there, so bringing down this cost which is uh, coming down. To give an example, uh, let's say um, um, uh, we are all familiar with um, uh, Uber, you know, because of whatever happened in Delhi. Everybody knows Uber. You know, Uber is a company which was formed in um, San Francisco, I think, 1997. And today, its um, uh, revenue is just about $1 billion. Valuation is about $40 billion. Okay, it operates in about 53 countries. Now, what they have done, they are saying that, well, things are available very easily for anybody and everybody. Okay? Like, for example, uh, uh, the whole model is that I have a car, 
uh, go back to the US model, you know, US situation or other countries in the world where you don't have these laws as we have in India. So I have a car, I'm going from place A to place B, it's my office uh, chore, you know, evening I get out of my office and go in my house. Now I have signed up on Uber. Now typically I'm driving all of myself, right? Now I don't mind picking up a passenger and earning some money. Now I have signed up with Uber, right? Now there is a passenger who is willing to join me and then therefore, you know, he or she comes and then I drop him off and I make money. So it is convenient for both the parties. Okay. So there was a slack in the resource that was available. This resource which is transportation was available in the society which was not getting used because there was no way to connect between the supplier and the consumption center. Now the Uber has just come in and facilitated that. Now the cost because of increased competition, this person who is to travel as such may want to charge a little less than what would be charged by a taxi fellow. So this is how things have changed. I'll give you some more examples on this. And you can relate as to how uh, things are being, uh, should happen. Uh, so, uh, you know, the way the term that is used here is uh, that we have these uh, uh, freelance workers which are available now. And the freelance workers uh, are willing to do things for you. Uh, typically, to begin with, it was for simple tasks, but now it is going into a complex task. Now, for example, uh, uh, let's say uh, 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 we have a plumber requirement in my company. Now, do I uh, employ a plumber or do I not employ a plumber? Do I, do I employ a plumber or do I not employ a plumber? I would not like to employ a plumber. So what do you do, which we have been talking here? Outsource. So we outsource. We outsource plumbing requirement to a third party who comes and provides services as and when we require it. Now go back to the third party. Now a plumbing company who's coming and giving you services, should they employ a plumber full time? The answer is no. Why? Because there are freelance plumbers available. So the moment a job requirement is triggered, you get in touch with this middleman, the outsourcing company, who has a database of these plumbers available, who will come and do the job for you, ultimately. Now, if you were to employ a plumber full time, the cost is very high. When you give it to an outsourcing company, the cost is likely to go down. When the uh, outsourcing company hires a plumber full time, the cost is very high. When the free hands, uh, freelance plumber said the cost is going down. So your shared service is in this context. There's some centralization, but a lot of sharing is happening. This cost is going to go down uh, 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 drastically. Uh, uh, it has not happened so much in India, but I guess it's kicking in slowly. In the US, it's been there. Uh, like, for example, uh, we are all familiar with these apps on your smartphones, right? So you have an app uh, wherein you want uh, a doctor at your home, right? So because somebody has developed an app, somebody has the database, so all that you require to do is to, you know, click, provide some symptoms, and you get a response back, you know, similar to Uber model. So you get a response back that uh, Dr. So-and-so photographs so-and-so uh, will actually be calling on your home, on your door, in two hours time, and this is the fee you pay. The moment this guy comes, you pay, it will be charged to your account. So this is happening. So, so essentially what is happening is um, uh, the uh, slack resources, which is available in the society, are available on job basis. Now, typically you would say that these are very simple tasks, you know, very well-defined tasks, like plumbing is a very well-defined task, doctor maybe is a very well-defined task, but no, things are changing. Companies are now uh, wanting to uh, uh, get these uh, problem solvings in this particular format, uh, like R&D tasks. Now, R a complex task by the experts can be broken into simple tasks. The collection of simple tasks becomes a complex task. So each of the simple tasks can be given away to freelance people who are available. So this is going to bring down the uh, cost uh, drastically. Uh, there's a company called uh, Axiom in US who provides lawyers, you know, you have a, a, a legal issue, you just go on the app or, you know, and then lawyer will come to your door and you pay, I mean, it is charged and you, you do whatever. Uh, without this, it was very difficult to uh, get these kinds of uh, services. Now, these examples may appear that they are in the personal domain, okay? Uh, don't get into that. 
uh, as for some data, for example, in the U.S., uh, uh, like for example, uh, freelancer.com and elance-odesk.com together have about uh, 9.3 million workers which are available for freelancing job to be absorbed on task or job basis by about 3.7 million companies. Now these 3.7 million companies would be hiring these people using these apps. Okay? So how does this impact the HR functions in your organization? Okay? You need to look into this and, and think about it. Okay? And so, so the, the question, the, the, the concept here is that uh, these jobs which are required to be done by the organizations, they are available uh, uh, on demand. So when I need something, something to be done, I raise a demand and that person absolutely tailor-made for that particular task will come. This guy is not my employee, this guy is not anybody's employee, these guys are freelancers and they come and do your job at a much uh, a cheaper price to the uh, organizations. So essentially, uh, uh, one of the statements that I remember uh, is while well, doing all this research is one of the statements that was uh, by given by Karl Marx uh, way back in the you know, 18th century or whatever. He said the world tomorrow will change into a situation where you have these people who are controlling these production centers okay? and then you have the people who are working in these production centers. So he actually has projected there will be two worlds. One would be people who would be rich and then there would be people who would be workers. So essentially what it means is that uh, in the current times, you can, you can relate this uh, to the situation which we are in today, that there are lots of people who have money with them, but no time. So they need services. And at the same time, we have a lot of people who don't have money, but they have a lot of time. So this was there in the society since millennia, whatever time. But today, we are talking about it, and today the technology is making it uh, feasible to get the two people together. So these two groups of people can interact with each other and then can trade with each other to fulfill each other's requirements and therefore there is a win-win situation that is happening and that is being done by these technology companies or, or the new tech uh, methods uh, which is uh, available. So therefore the organizations who traditionally would have had a unit to handle certain kind of a task including R&D or even for example uh, uh, generating a um, uh, advertisement. Like for example, I can, uh, one example is coming to my mind, uh, my government dot in I think, yeah, the government of India side. Now uh, you would be familiar that 